Live, local, late breaking, KOLD News 13, live at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Melissa Tan. The Pima County Health Department says cases of H1N1 or the swine flu have been confirmed in Pima County. Although Proposition 102 was passed in November of last year, one local lesbian couple were granted a marriage license today. Organizers of the Last Chance Platinum Bash concert held here in the Arizona Stadium didn't make as much profits as they had anticipated. New at 10 tonight, a family safely evacuated their home today after smoke filled their house. The fire broke out on East Glen near Craycroft around 3.30 this afternoon. A freeway closure alert. Find out live at 10 what stretch of I-10 you'll have to avoid this weekend, but why construction workers are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Another big fire in southern Arizona today, but this one was a controlled burn. Federal fire managers started the prescribed burn in Sierra Vista this morning. You may think learning Taekwondo was difficult for Jessica, but she says it was easy to substitute the hand movements with her feet. A deadly accident on the south side left one person dead and another injured. Tonight here at Armory Park, find out why 11 Panda Express workers were working under fake social security numbers. Live, local, late breaking, you're watching KOLD News 13. Coming up next, a man is accused of sexual assault on the south side. Police need your help catching him. Plus, football practice comes to a crashing halt. See what interrupted today's session and caused injury. I'm Melissa Tan. We'll be right back. A giant tent collapsed during a Dallas Cowboys rookie mini camp this afternoon. Take a look at this video at the practice field in Irving. The Cowboys special teams coach broke his back and 11 others were injured and had to be hospitalized. Customs and Border Protection officers say even with the threat of swine flu, it's still business as usual here at the Nogales Port of Entry. People crossing the U.S.-Mexico border aren't taking any chances. They're so concerned they're wearing medical masks. Because they say there are two cases, eh, are two cases in Nogales. This mother says she and her daughter are wearing masks because of rumors of swine flu cases found in Nogales, Sonora. CBP officers say they aren't doctors, but they are trained to spot travelers with certain illnesses. If travelers aren't sick, they're given a health alert and are allowed to continue into the U.S. Kiara Mina Lopez lives in Nogales, Arizona. She may not be wearing a mask, but she's worried about catching the flu. There's a lot of people like downtown over here at the stores, inside the stores. It's packed in there and yeah, you know, if somebody's sick in there, a few people will get out of their sick too. Richard Cooper, who walks across the border to work every day, isn't worried. I haven't seen anything, you know, I haven't seen anything that's out of, out of normal. He believes less people are traveling because of the flu threat. Normally on uh, Monday or Tuesday, we do have quite a bit of people still waiting online, but today it seems to be going real fast. CBP officers say there have been rumors that the border is closed, but as you can see, it's still open and operating as usual. They're just at a heightened state of awareness. Reporting on the border, Melissa Tan, KLD News 13, live local, late breaking. From the runway to the clear blue sky, inside this plane is 25-year-old Jessica Cox, a woman with great ambition. She's no ordinary pilot. She's flying this plane with no arms. Because right now I feel like um, these are, my feet are in my hands and... I'm not any different than anyone else. Cox used prosthetic arms to help with daily tasks until she was 14. Her father says once she gave them up, it didn't make any difference. I haven't lost one teardrop over Jessica being deficient with her arms because you would have never known she was deficient. You wouldn't know it now, but Cox was afraid to fly. Uh, for me, I had always been afraid of flying from childhood. Every time I'd step foot on a commercial airplane from the jetway, I'd say a prayer to God, you know, to take care of me because I was terrified. Today, she motivates others to never let fear get in the way of opportunity. In the last three years, Jessica pursued flight training. It, it was a lot easier than everybody thinks. Everybody's wanting me to say, well, how'd you do this and how, you know, it wasn't that tough for her, to tell you the truth. Finding a plane that suits her abilities was hard for Cox to find, but luckily she found the air coop located in San Manuel. This is the starter. That's how you engage the starter. These uh, buttons right here are for the radio and lights. Now that Cox has her license, she holds the title of being the first woman in aviation history to fly with her feet. <laughs> this is a recreation of the 1775 Spanish Presidio. Located in the heart of downtown Tucson, the Presidio Complex interprets what life was like during the colonial period. Living History is an event where people come and volunteer to dress up and portray the Presidio as it would have been when the Spanish were living here. The Spanish established a walled fortress called Presidio San Agustin del Tucson, which eventually became the town we call Tucson. 
The Presidio was the headquarters of the Spanish army where early residents protected the Spanish colonists and community. This is my great-great-great-grandfather. He enlisted in Tubac, uh, the Presidio of San Ignacio de Tubac in 1770. Hector Sosa is a descendant of Tucson's past. He is the great-great-great-grandchild of Luisa Sosa Sosa de Munguia. Now, my reason for being here is because I serve here as my great-great-great-grandfather, who was here, and I'm walking in his footsteps every time I come out here. Tucson Presidio Trust for Historic Preservation is an organization that relives Tucson's origins every year. <laughs> Okay, Today's event marks their closing ceremony, which shows the public how people dressed, ate, and spent their free time. There are many demonstrations and artifacts presented during this five-hour event. Visitors can walk around an original hohokam structure, which dates to the early agricultural period 800 B.C. to A.D. 50. Well, knowing about history gives you a knowledge of where you've been. It's kind of like reading a road map. You can't get to where you're going if you don't know where you're coming from or where you've been first. Local architect Lewis Hall founded the Tucson Presidio Trust in 1984. He had two goals, to raise awareness about Arizona's heritage and to push for the reconstruction of the fort that stood in what is now downtown Tucson. For Arizona Cat's Eye, I'm Melissa Tan. And finally tonight, couples looking to get engaged went looking for a little bling today at the McHale Center. It's a treasure hunt sponsored by Marshall's Jewelers. Several couples teamed up to scour the area around McHale in search of a $15,000 ring that was hidden somewhere. Couples received clues via text message. The couple who solved the most riddles and got to the location the fastest won the ring. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Melissa Tan. Have a great evening.